So getting this thing started, man, how would you describe what exactly it is that you do? You know, like what is your work that we see online? Well, thanks first, Gary, for having me on here. Thank you for this opportunity. Of course. And I hope you're really well today. And yeah, so basically I share the message, my particular form, I suppose, of non-duality, which is the recognition of our true nature as this infinite consciousness that's appearing right now. And the embodiment of that recognition in our lives, in how we think and feel and behave, It's what some people describe as the pathless path. (laughs) There's many different pointers, there's many different ways of describing it. And really for me, I'm sharing this because it's been an important part of my journey. Um, It's been the realizations and revelations that have been transformational and foundational for me. And therefore there's that natural impulse to share the beauty of this message and to share the, the beautiful outcomes of this receiving this message which Mm. is recognition of our true nature as this peace and causeless joy and joy of creation for the love of it um and so you know i share that message on youtube um that's part of what i do uh i do many things but that's part of what i do um and i also at the moment have a one-to-one offering so i work with people having conversations about our true nature delivering approaches to release stuck emotional energy in the body so we can feel more peaceful and calm in the body and overcome fears and limiting beliefs. Mm-hmm. Um, some entrepreneurial, uh, you know, things too, working and working with people, uh, you know, manifesting, creating projects, businesses that integrate this uh, understanding uh, of ourselves as uh, interconnected consciousness um and yeah amongst some other things you know just like to dabble with uh, art music graphics uh, and put it all in there whether it's in my thumbnails whether it's music i make for uh, breath work uh, that's in my courses or that i hope to deliver in live events in the future um, so there's a few things going on um and uh, yeah that's the foundation awesome man um yeah that's beautiful so getting into our true nature, how would you describe why that is peaceful? Why this is a sense of joy or bliss or you know, just good feeling comes from recognizing our true nature? Maybe to somebody that has no idea, right? Why is this... Uh, Why is this something that should be pursued, per se? Do you mind if I ask you some questions as well? Like, as we go into this investigation, because I think that will really help people as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But so can you recognize right now that you simply are, that you're simply aware? Mm Mm-hmm. And could you say that in a way that there is this space of awareness in which everything is just effortlessly arising? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can any feeling, so from this perspective, can any feeling, however chaotic or disturbing or painful, can that feeling ever harm this awareness? Doesn't seem like it. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's not, is that from like books you've read or like videos you've watched or some kind of belief or dogma, or is that from like your actual experience, like you looking into your direct reality? That's looking into my direct reality right now at this very moment. (laughs) Yeah. So we could say then that by our own investigation, not by belief, that this awareness that we essentially are is undisturbed Mm -hmm. by even the most painful and chaotic feelings. Yeah. And could we say the same about thought? Could we say the same about circumstances? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Uh, there is this recognition that what we essentially are is undisturbed by all appearances. And so therefore fundamentally and existentially at peace. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. 
So that recognition is available instantaneously and unconditionally. Yeah. It may take some time for that recognition to fully peter into the body and mind in the sense of this recognition may not instantly put an end to the momentum of all the dense thinking and feeling that has uh, built up by overlooking this recognition. Mm -hmm. And so there is an embodiment and an integration process of releasing the stuck emotions and traumas and having the nervous system and the contraction in the body come back to a state of equilibrium so that that peace is also really felt in our body in the way that we feel as well. Yeah. Uh huh. And usually the thinking catches up to reflect that there is a intellectual integration part of this, mm-hmm. but it's, all, but it's all built on that foundation of recognizing ourselves as one quality that we've pointed at here, which mm-hmm. is peace. Mm-hmm. And so you, I remember you asked about joy as well. Um, I can give a brief answer in the sense that I think most people will find that as they rest, just being, simply being, without identifying with thoughts going on those trains, which is where the disturbance is, which is where the dissatisfaction is, which is where the sense of lack is, the sense of being a limited individual, listening to those thoughts in our mind and conceptualizing ourselves to be that. Zooming out from that and just being, just simply being, whether or not we've heard this non-dual message or not, we have reference points in our life where we are just simply being. And we often find that there's this kind of causeless joy and happiness that kind of bubbles up from that. Mm -hmm. And that actually what's been blocking our happiness and joy for so long is this identification to being a limited separate sense of self for which happiness and joy is coming in the future in some kind of circumstance or situation or substance or whatever it is. So it's recognizing the peace of simply being and then you stay with that peace for long enough and you experience that causeless joy as well. Mm, So these are a few different qualities you could say, or ultimately our true nature as this non-dual infinite consciousness is beyond all qualities and descriptions. Mm -hmm. But there are implications of recognizing it as we're already discovering it in this conversation. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Wow. Very well said, man. Yeah, that's good. So, um, yeah, the peace of simply being. Yeah. Now, how would you say one catches a glimpse of this recognition in their life? Are there things that we can do to allow this in? Uh, like, would you say meditation, yoga, self inquiry practices? How would you say we just catch? the first glimpse, you know, the first awakening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, there's a bit of a nuanced answer to this because there's two levels to this. On one level, we recognize that there is a relative level, you know, to come to any of these messages, you may watch a YouTube video, you get recommended a YouTube video, you read a book, you, you know, you go to some retreat or some event or something like that. And you hear this message and maybe within that book, within that message, there's a kind of communication or maybe even a process like a kind of self inquiry, some kind of process that appears to bring us to this recognition. Mm -hmm. So on that level, there is this appearance of a person that's doing something in order to like reach this recognition, as it were. But once it's recognized, there's a great paradox there that actually there isn't anything to do for this recognition Mm -hmm. because it's not something that's done as a, and then there is a result of that doing of attaining something what it actually is, is it's a disappearance. It's a dissolution of the belief that I am that mental narrative that appears in awareness and this body and mind. And when that falls away, there's nothing that's 
done or nothing that's attained as such because it's recognized that that was already your true nature to begin with this infinite consciousness that's appearing right here right now what's appearing what you can see what you can hear smell taste feel is all appearing as this boundless awareness and that is what is already present it's already here it's all it's unconditional mm -hmm. now that's not for this to be misinterpreted as okay well there's nothing to do and so i'm not going to do self-inquiry or i'm just going to be apathetic or i'm not going to engage or anything like that or that you know that things are hopeless or fruitless or it doesn't mean any of that because there's a paradoxical element to it you know there is something to do relatively recognize your true nature become aware that you're aware see through the illusion that there really is no separate isolated limited entity here and that all there is is just simply what's appearing this boundless awareness appearing as everything and investigate what that is you know what what that is what that recognition is and what the implications are for how you live your life mm. yeah what would you say the implications are for how we live our life? Like once we do recognize our true nature, and we're talking in generalization, so it's kind of, uh, it's hard to simplify it that way, but if we can try to simplify it in that way, does it change up how we live our life once we are in tune with this recognition and actually integrate it in the goings on of our lives? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we find that, most if not all of our dysfunction is actually the product of believing ourselves to be that mind-made entity believing ourselves to be just our thoughts believing yeah. ourselves to be just a limited person and body and mind in a world and that is a limited separate entity which we have to defend and which we have to which is inherently lacking and dissatisfied so is always perpetually chasing new things in the future to come to some kind of resolution or wholeness or fulfillment mm -hmm. um, for which it can never fully satisfy. So that uh, results in a lot of destructive behaviors, both personally and globally. Mm -hmm. And so when identification to that momentum falls away, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't mean we instantly may become like gurus, saints or sages, like we're just floating on, on a cloud, you know, positively happy loving and kind to everyone for the rest of our life like there may be something momentum there's this some momentum to this uh contraction and limitation that we're being conditioned into for so long um but the recognition of our true nature as this boundless awareness means that that can start to fall away and as that falls away and as we heal our wounds and traumas more of who we naturally are, this love, this peace, this happiness, uh, is can naturally shine through. And, you know, to some people, they might say, oh, this very abstract consciousness, peace, love, happiness, or whatever. But you can even just look logically, like when you feel calm, when you feel safe, <laughs> when you feel fearless, are you prone to more dysfunctional or unethical behaviors? Or yeah. are you more prone to being loving and kind and present and aware and conscious and compassionate and creative? You know, those things are naturally there in our calm, relaxed, you know, state. Like mm -hmm. we're sometimes with some engagement and energy as well, but generally resting on our throne as awareness, as our true nature. And so, you know, we can ask inquiry questions about this in a way, like if I am this piece from my experience, you know, then there, there can be this natural implication to share that in the world, either through our communication, how we conduct ourselves in relationships, business, and what we're creating in the world. Mm -hmm. If I see that I am this awareness that we all share this consciousness, which is all us appearing to ourselves, then I recognize that not only are we interconnected, but ultimately we are one thing expressing, <laughs> as it yep. were. So what we do to other people 
uh, in terms of harm, we're only doing to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> and it. so, you know, there's many, many different implications of this understanding, but it doesn't, it's, it's not just coming from the intellectual realm. It's being informed by a recognition, which is actually beyond all words and descriptions and can't be contained within any word. It's beyond all form, all concepts. Um, and so there is a kind of emptiness that goes with that and a kind of blank slate and like, well, what is there to think about? What is there to do? <laughs> but there is also, there can be this engagement uh, with the world uh, from this recognition, which can, uh, you know, paradoxically, in letting go of any need for transformation of your life can completely transform your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From an outside perspective, without any understanding, it might not seem like that. Peace may seem like a very passive position, but from this throne of peace, this throne of being, as you described it, actually does come forth so much creativity spontaneity serendipity there's just so much that seems to come from it and it's actually the opposite of peace in that way it's, it's hard to explain because it is a paradox but it's like peaceful action it comes from peace mm -hmm. into action like there is um it's not passiveness it's not just like sitting on the couch eating cheetos it's not a sense of nihilism like nothing exists mm -hmm, mm -hmm. quite the contrary and i guess one word to sum it up is just creativity like there's just a natural inclination toward creativity that comes about from this peaceful state of being yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well that is that's what the whole thing is doing anyway isn't it you Constantly know creating. whether there's any individual there or not Mm -hmm. that's what it's doing mm -hmm. you know there is this just natural you know one thing consciousness appears to be doing or the appearance appears to be doing is appearing as all these novel forms mm -hmm. and, a, and a and a and a gradual you know i think lots of people have a very you know nihilistic dim view of the world at the moment that it's really going downhill and there's all this chaos um but also there's a gift in there because i think what a lot of people or realizing is that even though initially this message might seem a bit abstract or something, even the most ordinary of us are starting to get this sense that the peace and the joy and the happiness that we want isn't in the things that we thought it was, you know, mm -hmm. and that's and and the offerings to go into a world, whether it's social media, rabbit holes or, you know, commercialism or whatever it is, um, it, it, it's like, we have this we, we have a ramping up of opportunity for new experiences mm -hmm. and yet no matter how many new ex not a novel experiences we have yeah so long as those experiences are done on behalf of a limited separate individual that's trying to find something in that experience mm -hmm. they will never ever satisfy us yep mm -hmm. so when we withdraw from playing that game and getting on that ride all the time which goes round in circles, uh, there is still an unfolding of the appearance. There's still yeah. desire to create, desire to manifest. And in fact, it's, an, an, or desire to express oneself as an individual. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the great paradox is that, you know, in, 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 in relinquishing identity to just being a individual, it's not that we sit around being like, oh, there's just no one here. Actually, there can be an even greater refinement paradoxically a greater refinement and expression of our individuality because we are more free to be who yeah uh, to be what to be what is naturally desired mm -hmm. yeah i like to look at it like this the nihilist is like oh nothing matters and from i don't know what is the opposite of nihilism would you say is there a word for it well <laughs> what comes to mind is probably something a bit different but it's like it's like just the playing a game for the fun of it it's yeah. something it's like something like yeah. that so nihilus is like oh nothing matters when what we're talking about now is like oh nothing matters you know mm. and yeah. there's freedom yeah. in that <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so it's changing our perspective yes and the recognition that things still matter relatively you know things still yeah. matter relatively yeah 
-hmm. it's just there's and 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 so you know it's not the uh disappearance of all meaning as some people misinterpret it to be it's the recognition that yes ultimate reality is beyond all concepts of meaning and mattering yeah but the paradox is in the revelation of that there is even more meaning yeah and even better meaning from that absolute no meaning that's the paradox mm -hmm. again like mm -hmm. you can you start to create the meaning you give meaning what is the meaning to life you find that you create the meaning of life you are the meaning of life from this viewpoint and then there's ultimate freedom in that because the meaning of life is in every moment every second it's continual meaning it's not like you arrive at a point it's you you become the meaning every moment living and dying into the meaning yeah mm -hmm. that's this there's so much liberation and freedom in that it's quite hard to describe sometimes i say things like i just said and i'm like ah oh, dude you're not doing it justice but it's truly like a wavelength that one just has to tap into in their own way in their own being and come to this and feel it within you know there's only so much our words can do to describe it they only go so far you know yeah on that note actually let me ask you like how did you come to recognize this yourself like how did you uh how did you come to find that this wavelength is in this viewpoint this perspective is even a thing like uh, what brought you to this recognition again probably going to be a paradoxical answer because you know people are looking for one particular event or like you know, did you read a particular book? When did it kind of click? Like they're looking for an event because that's how we p conceptualize awakening, enlightenment. It's something that happens to me. It's something that I attain. Um, I so, so it. I can't describe it in that way because that has not been the reality. However, you know, like if I am to look back in the story of Alex, in the story of time, um, I'll be introduced to things in many different stages. I mean, even at the age of 15, uh, I was, remember downloading Alan Watts talks off of Napster, if anyone can remember that, mm -hmm. and uh, being really excited that perhaps it might download by the morning over my 28.8K dial-up modem uh, <laughs> <laughs> to get all of those 28 megabytes or whatever it was to listen to that. And, you know, and then I remember being in some chat rooms on the internet and some random stranger chucking Zenko ones at me um you know and and, and so th th there was always those seeds um at some point in time I had a big uh, relationship collapse or a relationship of 10 years which brought up a lot of pain um and then uh, and a lot of painful story as well so there was an opportunity there and uh that's when I read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle and that kind of opened me up I guess in a way um, but then that really like led on a on a progressively deeper journey into different forms of this message and different refinements of this message. And then, you know, my own personal journey of healing and integration and how and that informs everything that I'm doing now as well. So, you know, I can't give a simple answer, unfortunately, in sense of like, oh, there's just like some simple thing like I'm awareness or there's no one here and boom, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the paradox is, is that when it happens you kind of realize that it never really happened you yeah. know there was never that limited separate individual there to begin with all there was is this timeless awareness appearing and and everything else is a memory it has relative importance but there's i can't prove it <laughs> uh, you know the only thing I can't prove it even even in principle in the sense that it only arises as a memory in this timeless now the past is the past and only ever arises as, as thoughts and images so when this is recognized it's always fresh it's always new it doesn't necessarily come from uh you know it's not like one particular book or teacher or moment or something like that because that it, what's what's recognized is that is a, the whole illusion of this journey through time and moments and everything like this they still appear relatively and you can look at the journey of time and pinpoint certain you know places a certain kind of realization etc but on the deeper level what's recognized is that that is and was all a movie of this timeless appearance of 
consciousness now. Yeah. Mm. Well said. <laughs> Do you think that, in a way, our pursuit toward the material things, whether it is a relationship, like you said, car, money, house, these pursuits toward wholeness in the world are what actually gets us on this wavelength though because it's like we have to figure out that this isn't the way in order to realize the way in other words this, does our suffering bring us to this realization mm -hmm. well the suffering and the separation and the limitation really is like it's what creates this whole manifestation yeah. like a dreamer has to forget that they're dreaming, that they're even conscious in a way, in order to appear to themselves as a dream character in a dream world. It's like you <laughs> yeah. have to wake up in a dream and be like, oh, I'm in a dream and in a world. Like if you just are only recognizing your infinite boundless nature, you have yeah. no, there's no appearance. Mm -hmm. So part of how the appearance of created is this apparent experience of being a separate limited individual to which all these things happen to us, various emotional wounds, traumas, challenges, experiences, which further solidify this conditioning and contraction. Um, and, and at some point, you know, there is the, the overlooking, of, you know, the, the, the recognition that that isn't the, the essential foundation of who we are. But can you remind me of the original question again? Essentially, is it our suffering? the drama of our life that brings us out of the drama in suffering. Yeah, I guess like that was a big part of the answer then. And, but yes, because, and then, and, but then it's like, as we engage with the world on this pursuit for what is really our true nature through new experiences, which bring temporary pleasure and temporary uh you know temporary joy but then back into the pain and everything there's nothing right or wrong with that and actually within that there's always beautiful opportunity because it's almost like the worse things get the more likely we are to look deeper mm -hmm. so what initially seems like a complete calamity and catastrophe for example a decade-long relationship collapse or financial collapse or health collapse or something like that uh, can actually serve as what as, as, as the greatest pointer as it were mm. because something which something is realized within us that like something is fundamentally wrong here in a way you know or there's a mm -hmm. fundamental misunderstanding if I am suffering this much yeah and and so that in a way kind of like forces us to open the book to watch the video to go to the retreat or whatever yeah. it is yeah and then within that there can be a liberation that we may not have got if we had just like a life where we're just floating along and we didn't have any challenges or any pain or anything like that like that's the great irony and paradox of it all is that through our suffering, we get to experience ourselves by contrast. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there has to be this contrast, as it that were, to even have an experience. There has to be up, down, left, right, you know, black, white, Yin -yang. And all the spectrums of the colors, yeah, et cetera, to, 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 even, to even have an experience. And so we are already unconditionally this peace and freedom but there can be a representation of that in the world of form by contrast, by contrast to unloving behaviors, we can act more loving by contrast to feeling very unpeaceful and enacting unpeaceful behaviors. We can, you know, not really know what loving and peaceful behavior is <laughs> by, by, by experiencing the pain and suffering of our limitation, by contrast, we can start to embody and feel 
the, more of our essential freedom in the world of form mm -hmm. and actually manifest what we desire. You know, there's a lot of uh, speak in the non-duality scene about having no free will and manifestation is all the ego or the illusion or anything like that. But that's never been my experience. Again, there's a paradox in the sense that, you know, there's still manifestation. It's just not done on behalf of a separate limited individual that thinks it's going to find permanent peace and wholeness in that manifestation. There's still a desire to manifest, but more for joy and for love. It comes from fulfillment and peace as opposed mm -hmm. to need and lack. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? It comes mm -hmm. from our essential freedom. And so, you know, there's that aspect of it as well. Mm. Very well said again. Yeah. Wow. I like to say in a very simple manner, we have to recognize what we're not in order to recognize what we are. And I think that's essentially what the suffering allows one to do. And from that viewpoint, suffering is actually grace. You know, suffering is actually for us to all awaken. It might not seem like it in the world, and it might seem even a little entitled for me to say it in my comfortable house, but... I don't know. It really is, man. I think it is all grace. Might not seem like it, like, like I said, in the moment, but everything seems to be for us. I believe. That's the perspective shift. This whole thing is for us. Our growth toward this recognition and integration of the recognition. Living from that recognition, that throne of peace. And, uh, that's it. I mean, yeah. What more do you want than that? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and um, I should emphasize that, although I talked about, you know, apparently coming to this recognition through guides, books, you know, videos, whatever it is, like obviously, like engage with those things if you feel it's right for you, um, and 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 use your, and and just respond to to intuition. Um, however because this is we must also state that because this is unconditional it, it, this recognition can come from apparently come from anywhere or it's or happen at any time it's completely unconditional it could be you're having a walking nature you look into a dog's eyes it could be absolutely anything mm -hmm. because truly absolutely anything is part of the one that's Everything. it that's it yeah the teacher the guru is literally in everything mm -hmm. and that seems like dumbfounding that doesn't even make any sense but i do believe that i do believe that this recognition can come from really any moment any situation anything everything is you everything mm -hmm. is me mm -hmm. it's like wow that is mm -hmm. wild man when that really hits it just it doesn't make any sense to the mind, the logical, rational mind. It tries to figure it out how it's not me, but I don't know. Once you see it, I feel as though you can't unsee it. No matter what happens in life, no matter how uh, intense the drama of life can get, the mind stuff, no matter what, it seems like it's nothing. It seems like it's, it's nothing. Exactly. It seems like all of that is just a coming and going. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, man, do you feel that once you see this, and I know you said there is no point of seeing that you can really describe, but now that you see it, mm -hmm. is there any way that you could unsee it? Well, we unsee it every time we consent to being a separate limited individual. When If a thought arises in awareness, and that has a sense of I in it. Mm. And we mm -hmm. consent to believing ourselves to be that I, uh, then we're overlooking it, as it yeah. were, again. Yeah. We're, 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 we're getting on that ride. Did Has that happened over here since kind of rec certain recognitions? Yes. <laughs> less and less so um and 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 with uh, more and more softening around it as well you know there can be this thing of like 
we are, you know, there's this recognition that this character still appears, you know, there's the relative level of, you know, I am appearing as Alex, or Alex is what's appearing. Um, but, you know, ultimately, uh, it's just the recognition of this space of awareness that's full of everything that's beyond all concepts and ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe that's just a dance. And because this is like a work in progress, the journey is the destination is the cliche. So I think mm -hmm. that's just natural for that to happen to us. We get lost in the character stuff again. Although I imagine the remembrance back into the true nature of the throne of peace. That's something that you said that I, I really like. The throne of peace is something that's easier to remember, right? It's just like once you get the taste, it's easy to come back into how it tasted, you know? Yeah. And wh whether there's a character appearing there or not, like I can say maybe as a fuller answer to your question, that over here it is now very obvious that we are not people made of matter in a world made of matter that are producing consciousness like that whole mainstream materialism myth like that is very clearly not true over here Backwards. yeah <laughs> and uh and and uh, actually there is this recognition of all there is is this consciousness dreaming as mm -hmm. it were, mm -hmm. very much like a dream, but not in a kind of like, oh, it's all a dream, it's all unreal, or like nothing matters kind of way. Like it's a very real, vivid, seeming, solid dream, and things relatively matter ethics, compassion, love relatively matter. But it's very clear here that that's the case, mm -hmm. and that the whole materialism paradigm of just simply being bodies and minds in a world to which things are happening to us separate and isolated from the world is a complete fabrication and illusion. Mm -hmm. That's probably a better answer to your question. It mm, was good. Yeah. It's a complete switch from consciousness comes from the material mind. It goes from the material mind comes from consciousness consciousness is fundamental to mm -hmm. this dream world that yeah. is the big switch that is the yeah. paradigm shift and, yeah uh, yeah from that you truly create from that you create from that seat of consciousness and mold the material world mold the dream as you go which i'm pretty sure we've said plenty of times in this conversation but it's just a simple like just if you can visualize it, anyone listening here don't think that consciousness comes from the brain, which is that's the paradigm that we've all got conditioned into in the Western world. We have the brain, so we have consciousness. No, reverse that into we have, we have consciousness, so thus we have the brain, we have the material world. It's such a simple switch, but something very easy to overlook, you know, if you're just operating from the mind, the basis of the mind. But mm -hmm. I visualize it right now. It's just like a little, it's like almost like a mirror effect, you know? I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You understand exactly. though? Obviously yes. you understand. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, consciousness, awareness, what's appearing, like it's the only medium by which anything is ever experienced or known. Mm -hmm. And so this whole other paradigm of having a completely separate, abstract, objective world out there. Um, you know, it it requires a, a a whole set of abstract concepts for which you know are really not needed, as it were. I mean, in a way, it's certain ways of thinking about things and perceiving the world has enabled us to do certain types of science. Uh, you know, in it's enabled us to study. And look at the, what by objectifying the world, mm -hmm. it's helped people to study and look at what's going on in that world of form. Mm -hmm. But the mistake has been to start conceptualizing it as something separate. As it, it, reverse of that still means we can still do all the same physics and science 
but we understand that what we're looking at is not a separate world made of matter, but it, consciousness is what consciousness is doing. And in a way, when we look through our microscopes, we're putting a microscope onto ourselves. You see, and in that interconnected view of the world, um, there are a whole different other implications for why we're even doing science, why we're even uh, creating the things that we're creating. Mm. Yeah, man. This is a good talk. Just got to take a deep breath. Sometimes I get to these points in... Uh, conversation i'm like what more can i really say you know there's only so much we can say but in a sort of joking manner let me ask you that what is the value in in doing what we do here online having these conversations you doing your monologues on your channel and your um you know your sessions with people is it how would you describe that? Why do we do what we do? Is it, does it just feel good? Is this just something that you just naturally want to do from this viewpoint? Yeah, it's just happening. It's just happening, not for anyone in particular, you know, for some idea of being a individual to, which is accumulating experiences or accolades or achievements or anything like that. It's more just like a natural unfolding, a natural inclination in the way that someone may naturally be inclined to sing or dance. It's exactly the same. Mm. It's just another expression. It's just another game. Like, so, you know, and then in, in, even when I think about like what I'm doing, um, I, I even want to incorporate like more of the uh elements we like traditionally define as like creative or artful like art music and stuff like that but really you know having powerful conversations is just another art form as it were it's just another form of expression that shares yeah. this and that that but that can be shared through art that can be shared through music that can be shared in uh you know taking the trash out like it can yeah. be shared in <laughs> absolutely everything um it's just uh, everybody has their own individual unique expression and so um, it's connecting with what naturally arises as inspired intuitions and exciting ideas from a sense of peace and wholeness mm -hmm. um, uh, and you know can I say that oh yeah, that there's a hundred percent of the time through my whole life since certain revelations i've only ever done things out of <laughs> no there's probably been times where i've been like healing old wounds or where oh, i realized that some kind of character has appeared that seems to be attached to a certain way <laughs> or whatever but it's not like oh you know that means i'm not awake or i'm going backwards and just because this is what a lot of people think when these things happen <laughs> um it's that just another shadow just another um contraction and limitation that hasn't had yet, hadn't yet been exposed yet because it hadn't been you know hadn't it, it's it's exposed in response to a situation when those things have come up they're like you know they were more and more seen as like okay there's something uh here to you know there's there's something else here to see through something else here to dissolve so there's an embodiment process that goes along in time like no one's perfect here and they don't have to be mm -hmm. um it's just that that there, there, there can be this natural unfolding and embodiment of this recognition mm, amen yeah that's the beauty of it too seeing the perfection in our imperfections right a sort of forgiveness comes from that forgiving our mistakes per se mm -hmm. yeah on the way yeah yeah again paradoxical it's like when you realize that there's there was no one there to blame or forgive to begin with relatively that can appear as forgiveness and and and, and release and emotional mm. resolution yes and that's freedom yeah that's freedom yeah man no more guilt tripping oneself yeah ah <sighs> this is good man. this is really good um i don't even know what to say to be honest um yeah maybe we should wrap it up start to wrap this thing up 
I think I'm using that as a sign. I don't have anything else that's coming up in the moment uh, for me to ask. It, has that, say. it can have that effect, as it were. It's like it's like there's a recognition that it's just beyond all concepts, all ideas. Yep. Yep. And yet you can talk about it forever. That's the thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I will. I will talk about it forever. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's part of what we do, right? That's I guess so. Yeah, for now, at least. Or, or what's happening. That's what's happening. That's what's happening, everybody. Well, hey, man, I think that's a good note to wrap it up at. Do you have anything else you want to say, though? <laughs> yeah, I hope everyone's having a great day. Wishing everyone peace, love, happiness, joy, fulfillment, wholeness. It's all within you, and I hope it all manifests in your life as well. Amen to that, man. Truly, it is all within. It is all within all, all of us. We are just a testament. We're just here online talking about it. You know, we're just hopefully serving as some kind of reminder or remembrance for you to go back to you so yeah that's the best that i can do um it's all within and thank you very much alex for coming on here this was an awesome talk you are very well spoken very wise so thank you for coming on here and sharing your time effort and wisdom with all of us that's it man peace and love oh. to you great uh thanks for the opportunity um yeah thanks for asking the questions having me on Peace and love to you too, Gary. Peace and love, everybody. See ya.